Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I'm talking about the first volume in Mizuki Nomura's light novel series, Book Girl. This one subtitled Book Girl and the Suicidal Mime. Now, this was released in Japan in 2006. Yenon started releasing it in English in 2010. In Japan there are 16 volumes, 8 which comprise the main story, and then 4 volumes of short stories, and then 4 volumes of a side story series. Now, we only have the 8 main story volumes in English, and I'm going to hazard a guess and say that's probably all we're going to get. All 8 are currently available, so if you pick this one up and you really like it, feel free to binge away because they are all currently available. The story revolves mainly around the literature club in a high school, and it's two members. The president, Toko Amano, and her second-year classmate, Konoha Inoue. Now for Konoha, he kind of doesn't know exactly how he ended up in this club. It was pretty much because he got roped into it by Toko, <laughs> and it's because he discovered Toko's secret. Toko is, well, she describes herself as a book girl. But what that really means is, is that for her, in order to have things like taste and nourishment, she has to eat stories. Human food is meaningless to her. It just tastes like sand in her mouth. And for Konoha, who is being rooked into providing her with short stories as snacks, it's an interesting and conflicting type of situation to be in because in his past, two years before the book begins, he was an anonymous author who rose to incredible fame with his one and only book. But because he was young and because he really wasn't prepared for what was going to happen, he actually ended up having a mental breakdown and gave up the idea of continuing as a novelist. And so when we meet these two characters, they are continuing their existence together as a club. But then they are approached by a first-year student, and she wants the literature club to help her to confess her feelings to an upperclassman. Now, Toko, who's a bit greedy for the idea that she might get some new stories out of this particular thing, is all for it. Konoha has his reservations. And it turns out that there's good reason. Because as they pursue this, it turns into a bit of a mystery. And they find out that not all love stories have happy endings. Book Girl is written from the first person's perspective, from Konoha's perspective. He covers the vast majority of the book. There are a few times when there are excerpts from somebody else's work. But for the most part, the story is told from his point of view. The story combines a whole bunch of different themes and a bunch of different kind of genres into the single book. On the one hand, we have a lot of discussions about literature. Obviously, with Toko being having a palette for stories, we have a lot of discussion about books and authors. And it was interesting for me as a book lover to hear books discussed in an entirely different way to hear books talked in terms of their taste and how certain works, even by the same author as they differ, can taste different. So there's a lot of discussions on literature and there was one particular Japanese author's work that becomes very important and central to the majority of the story. Another component of this obviously is school life and relationships with peers and with classmates. And it really gets into the theme of masks and the theme of hiding who you are in order to fit in and presenting to others what you think they want to see of you as opposed to actually letting them see who you are. Also, there are themes of suicide I want to mention that because I know that some people are bothered by that. It is a component of the book. In terms of genres, it also brings in an element of mystery. There are obvious light novel trappings that 
to be honest, kind of feel a little bit forced into the book. You know, there is the clumsy girl who shows her panties. There are the fact that Toko is being harassed at times about her flat chest. These are things that this book could have done without. It really didn't need them. But at the same time, if you've read a ton of light novels, you'll probably hardly even stop at those moments because those things are so pervasive in light novels that, I don't know, I kind of feel like that was shoehorned into this one because it's a light novel. What really sets this apart for me, though, is the writing style. It is so much more evocative and descriptive and flowery and emotive in comparison to so many other light novels that we currently have available in English. And I don't know if that's because it's a female author, because the vast majority of light novels we currently have in English are male authors. Um, at least most of the ones that I have read. I know there are some others, but, you know, in terms of what I have read, it has been vastly majority male voices. Um, so I'm not too sure if it's because it's a female author or if it's just because this is her style. I haven't read any more of her works, so it's very hard for me to say. But the book feels very different in tone. It feels a lot more like a fairy tale. Even the artwork in the book, and I don't often talk about artwork, but even the artwork when you sort of get an idea. I'll try and get closer so I don't get it in focus there. You can see that it's a very sort of soft and it's, it's the artwork is just like the writing. It's, it's very emotive. It's very flowery. It flows. All of these things combine to make, give this book a sort of fairy tale feel to it. I think the other thing that kind of helps that is that for me, the two words that popped into my mind immediately to describe this book was sweet melancholy. Because those two things kind of run throughout the entire book. This sense of sadness, this sense of loss, uh, this sense of, at times, hopelessness. But at the same time, there is also this warmth. And I would say a lot of that has to do with the relationship between Konoha and Toko. Their relationship is one that, despite all the other places that they wear masks, despite all the other characters who wear masks, theirs is a relationship that is so much more honest with each other. And you get the sense that clearly they haven't told each other their entire life story. You know, Konoha has not opened up to her about having been an author and so forth, and Toko doesn't really discuss her backstory in any way, and, and Konoha doesn't really seem aware of her backstory in any large way. But just in terms of how they behave with each other, they even, you know, Konoha himself even comments that with her he feels less guarded. He feels far more genuine about who he is and what he says and how he feels about things. So there is this very sweet relationship that is entirely throughout the book. So there is this level of this sort of sweetness to it, this, this companionship. I wouldn't really describe it per se as romance at this point. I don't know if it goes to that point or not. Um, I really love this book. I will be reading more of them. Um, but at this point, it is this this true friendship, this trust that these two characters have that kind of is that calm in the midst of this storm. And it's their relationship, I feel, that really sort of anchors the book down so that even when you are in the sort of darker, more tragedy type bits, it still doesn't quite break you. It's still not what I would call a dark novel even though, obviously, as I said, it deals with some very dark themes. All in all, Book Girl really surprised me. When I first walked into this book, seeing the title was and the Suicidal Mime, to be honest, I thought this was going to be a really comedic type story or, you know, a little very tongue-in-cheek kind of, 
Dory, and it truly wasn't. It it really did deal with some darker themes. It truly was a lot more thought provoking to me. I just was drawn into this book, and it's not going to be for everybody. Okay, if you're looking for action and adventure, not the book for you. Certainly not this first volume. I don't know about the series in general, but I can't really see the series going there. If you're looking for fights, if you're looking for you know really super powered individuals battling with each other, no, not an isekai. Um, it's not even like comedic. It's it's not like that sort of sarcastic comedy of either Konosuba or you know my youth romantic comedy. It it's none of those things. It is at times I I definitely smiled. Um, but it was more of like a heartwarming kind of laugh. It wasn't like a bust my gut funny kind of thing. So there's definitely elements of comedy in it, but it is a very different type of comedy than I would say you have in a book like say Konosuba or, you know, my youth romantic comedy. It's a, it's a very, it was very different than what I thought it would be. I I really thought going into it that it was going to be quite different, but I was pleasantly surprised. But as I said, it has themes that aren't going to be for everybody. Some people don't want to read a book that has in any way uh, discussions about suicide. It is not going to be for everybody because it is a lot more of like a, I would say the bulk of it feels more like a mystery. And it's funny because my wife watches a whole bunch of like BBC type mysteries like Hercule Poirot and Agatha Christie, like other Agatha Christie mysteries and stuff like that. It reminded me of some of those, you know, like the the sort of idea that you get to the end of it all and the case is solved. But again, you know, does this fairy tale really have a happy ending? But at the same time, you can't say it's a sad ending. So, and that's what I mean. Like this book just walks that edge of not really being happy, not really being sad. And yet it does make you feel both, or at least it certainly did me. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of Book Girl. Now, these ones, uh, they don't really number them. They are subtitled. So if you want to get into this series, if you want to read the first book, look for Book Girl and the Suicidal Mime. There you go. Um, I referenced EnglishLightNovels.com, a show site that I have mentioned many times to keep track of which was first in the series and so forth. Uh, so if you want to continue beyond the first book, feel free to look on uh, her website and uh, use it as a guide. That's what I'll be doing to figure out which is book number two in this series, because I am going to continue this one. Speaking of book number twos and a series that I've kind of neglected for a long time, my next book is going to be Bake Monogatari, book number two. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me when I was going to get back to this series, and I know I've kind of been putting it off in favor of a ton of new stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm catching up a little bit. Uh, I, I've gotten through quite a few books pretty quickly in the last two weeks, so fingers crossed I'm, I'm going to keep up. So this will be my next review. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, don't forget to subscribe so you can check out all of my future light novel reviews, including future reviews of Book Girl and, of course, my review of Bake Monogatari volume number two. I really appreciate you all joining me in this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.